My name is Mark Lee, I'm from South Wales. Uh, my robot is K2 and I have a beta spinner. Um, I think my approach to a fight is gonna be um, your face, my face. Roboteers, get ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, begin. Here we have the big battle of horizontal versus vertical. Question's going to be what's going to hit first. I'm not liking the look of these weapons. Oh, it's going to be one hell of a hit when they both meet. Oh, and there's bits going everywhere. That beta bar is a very effective spinning weapon. I've used it myself on my own robots. It is incredibly effective. Pinwheel, is one of the wheels locked up there? Um, quite possibly. Oh, throwing sparks from the oh. arena floor. That's a big hit from the egg beater there of K2. Nine, eight, K2 backing off seven, now. Six, five, and the seconds four, count down three, to oblivion two, one, for Pinwheel. That's Pinwheel out of here. Victory for K2. Roboteers, get ready. Three, two, one, begin. It's the egg beater versus the hyperactive axe. Who will come out on top? This, will, this could go very well for K2 or it could go badly. If, if Anx get one lucky shot through that bar, it could stop the whole thing dead. But likewise, with the axe, they have to be careful and mind where they hit because they could attack that spinner on the front of K2 and some wedge that's there on the front came flying off. The thing is with a beater, it's very good at getting a hold of you if, if there's any sort of point where it can get a grip of you. Very hyperactive with the axe once more, taking a few more uppercuts from that deadly egg beater weapon. Anx having to be very careful with the axe. If they put it through the, the beater bar at all, it could shatter it completely. The lights are now off. No one's home. I think that's it for Angst. The power lights Eight, out. It looks like the seven, same problem as last six, time. He's having technical five, problems. Angst. Four, Feeling angst three, now as the count two, reaches zero. One, okay, two. Five. March on. The repairs from earlier clearly just didn't hold out. Shame, but very well done. Hope he comes back next year. Roboteers, get ready. Three, two, one, begin. The egg beater versus the blade, the articulated blade. Taking chunks out of the arena floor already. Oh, and flip it. turned upside down and thrown into the corner of the arena, trying to use that little arm there to self right. There's a big hit there, but something's broke on the front of K2. Oh, he's back spinning. I was worried there for a second. More sparks thrown from big Saw hits Loser. Both sides. When you go spinner to spinner, you never know what's going to happen. It's always a fun time, but they've gyro danced their way upside down there, Saw Loser. Hit enabled. This is not going to be a pit fight. This is going to be a, a serious case of just battering each other to death. And that's exactly what K2 is looking to do here. It's got the power, it's got the weapon, and it's just doing fantastic. As you can see, parts are coming off a sore loser. I believe that's the protective cover for the brushless motor driving the weapon. Once that's damaged, it's game over for that devastating spinner. The thing is, it'll still function as arm, so you could in theory use it as a lifter, but it's nowhere near as effective without that spinning disc. No, the main design, the main offensive weapon on that is, of course, oh, no. that deadly no, vertical that. disc. And they're just not being given a chance here. They're not being given an opening by K2. But at the same time, you can't count out Alex Mordu. Many years experience, and as I said earlier, one of the best drivers in the robot building community. And it's definitely standing up to those blows, the Saw Loser. Oh, that's the weapon died on Saw Loser from the looks of it. But he's still got the arm. He's still, he's trying. Oh, another big hit from K2 and, and another one. More. Saw Loser just keeps coming back for more. It does not die. But again, that 
terrible egg-beating weapon of K2. So persistent. So concise. So dogged. It just One waits. It's just like a metronome. It keeps going and going and going. And K2 coming in again. More hits. More hits. Ripping the front apart on Soul Loser. Soul Loser now got that arm back. Trying to use that metal shield to take some of the blows from K2's weapon. Oh, down comes the arm. Obviously, the weapon not doing any damage. But at the same time, K2 can't get around to get in and use his. And K2 isn't driving as nicely as it They're was driving. at the start. Something's grinding there on the arena floor. And now, has this fight begun to turn? I think parts have actually started coming off of the weapon of K2. The teeth on that are actually bolted in, and if they start coming yeah, loose... Exactly. You can see it rattling there. What an awesome performance from both of these machines. This is a fantastic battle, both weapons. Stop Six. and deactivate robots. At the end of it, the key for this is going to be the death of Soul Loser's weapon. Either way, what a brilliant battle to round off our heats. All right, how are we feeling, guys? Okay, we have a unanimous decision from the judges. They've been judging on control, damage, and aggression. And going through to the Bogglebots Grand Final is... K2! <laughs> Roboteers, get ready. Three, two, one, begin. Both very fancied machines, these for the title, Captain Doom taking on its usual tactic of ramming into K2, trying to stop that egg-beating weapon. The thing is, that egg-beater weapon is actually from America. You can purchase it off the internet. A lot of the robots that Captain Doom will have fought before will have had that weapon. So he's very used to dealing with it. We don't see it as much in the UK. It's not come over here recently. And but what purchase can that egg-beating weapon get on Captain Doom? That's the question now. Mm. Well, if you look, that little red thing, that's actually one of the retaining washers from his wheels. Yeah, you can see one of the wheels on Captain Doom is now out of shape. K2 appears to be... The weapon appears to have stopped working. I don't know whether he's thrown the pulley or... Well, it has taken several huge slams. Oh, no, it's slams started up again. From Captain Doom. And there's another one. You can see the two little waggling forks on the front. The wheels of Captain Doom have definitely taken a beating. An egg beating, you might say. K2 will be looking to try and get into a position where oh. it can... There we go. Oh. Another massive slam there. And for a second, we thought that had killed the drive. Still working. K2 moving through, getting more and more hits. Oh, a big hit on the front of Captain Doom. And I think this is the real first big challenge that Captain Doom has had throughout this tournament. Up until now, Captain Doom's fights have only ever been about 30 seconds long. This is a real test of his ability to stay for a full comp a full match. But also shows we're really up to the best of the best now. Yeah, message to America. Bring it on. Look at the damage to the wheels. Ooh. More chunks coming off the wheels. Something else has just come flying off. Oh, there. Got it out of the arena. Arena. oh, well. Using the power of K2's own weapon, he just rammed into him physically until he bounced himself out of the arena. Took the knocks. Very might. Roboteers, get ready. Three, two, one, begin. Interesting mix of spinners here. All three of these machines with that particular type of weapon, but different styles as they come smashing together. There's SCD taking a knock against K2 there. Rev2 with the big undercutter, trying to get to the wheels of his opponent. Oh, massive slam there. K2 taking a big hit there from SCD, pinballed across the arena once again. 
There's SCD spinning up to speed there in the bottom corner of the arena as K2 and Rev2 come into contact with one another. Enabled. That's the pit release tire enabled. That's what K2 seems to be going for as Rev2 takes a slam there in the bottom corner from SCD. The pit release tire has been activated. Down goes the pit. K2 hanging back there. Appears to have lost oh, his weapon. Another Ooh. massive attack there as SCD goes flying across the arena. I think that was Rev2 that smashed into the side of it. Rev2 may have done as much damage to itself though, if you look, it's no longer driving properly on one side and takes another big hit from SCD. SCD just getting spun up and once it gets spinning, you'll notice those lights in the corner to help work out which way is the front. Oh! Bounced away there, almost ending up in the pit. Oh, Lack of control, that. perhaps here, conceal their oh, fate. Oh, and three. SCD's out! Pushes them down and out. SCD out of the competition, we're down to two, K2 and Rev2. Sparks beginning to fly there, but yeah, what's right happened? There. With Rev2 here, oh no, they're free. Rev2 having difficulty moving across the floor. This could either be a drive problem or it could just be it's taken some hits from the side from SCD and it's risen one of the wheels up just enough to make it difficult for it to move. Oh, it's, it's like going 16 rounds with Conor McGregor. He's got no legs left on him. K2 weaponless. Its only weapon now is just the power of that four wheel drive system. K2's bar has been disabled for a very long time in this fight. Rev2 with that lack of drive, K2 is using the force of those knocks from Rev2's blade to send it spiraling towards the pit, surely. Any second now, the oh, it's in. K2 surviving the loser's melee to come back and make it for a place in the finals. The egg beater, beating all. Hopefully he can repair it before he has to fight next. Roboteers, get ready. Three, two, one, begin. I think the speed and the effectiveness of that wedge is going to spell doom for K2. K2 is going to want to get a good purchase on the side of Snappy and use that beater. It's been a mountainous run for K2 thus far, but is it going to come to a close now? It doesn't seem to have the power that it had before. Ooh, ramming that egg-beating weapon into the sidewall there. Snappy, definitely the aggressor here. Snappy using tactics, trying to keep Hit. K2 to the Enable. front and not give him a chance to get down to the rear where his armor is much thinner than at the front. Oh, Snappy Ooh. taking a hit there from the egg beater. But then getting Sparks right back flying. underneath. Beautiful aggression. And once again, and it's hard to tell if that's the flipper firing or if that's in fact the flipper taking hits, taking uppercuts from the egg beating weapon of K2. Oh, and a big hit, flipping Snappy over. Well, I guess that's answered my question. K2 there, but has K2 lost the weapon or has he just powered it down to push? Who knows at this point, and are Snappy lulling them into a false sense of security? This Think. may become a driver's game, as K2 may have lost a weapon, but Snappy being upside down makes it oh, much harder. K2, oh. they've fallen oh. into the trap. Oh, look at them, desperately fighting it. This is turning into a, a war of attrition, oh. both pulling away from the pit after very nearly Snappy putting K2 in. Who has got the stronger drive? Who's got the stronger pushing power? And certainly with Snappy inverted, it's looking like K2 has found a weak spot. Both seem to be very evenly matched in pushing power. K2 might have the slight advantage, mainly due to the traction of the wheels. But Snappy, if he is spinning up again, K2 getting that weapon going. Oh. He may be looking for an out of the arena with what, similar to what happened to himself with Captain Doom. Those bright, lurid green lights on the underside of Snappy. My eyes hurt. Oh! K2 driving Snappy backwards into the pit. K2, the victor. What a surprising victory. Roboteers, get ready. Three. Two, one, begin. So it all comes down to this. Limpid versus K2. K2 has themselves flipped up on the side, crashes down again. K2 very nearly to getting stuck on the side there. Lucky to follow the right way and get his wheels down to pull itself off. 
Limpet staying on to them, not giving them a chance to get any hits in or get any bearings. For me, Limpet is just taking the time here until that hit release button becomes active and then it's a case of trying to control K2 toward the corner of the arena and push them into the pit. Limpet using its drive power there to use the sidewalls to batter K2 to death and going straight comes. for the pit release button. This is the tactic. K2 driving over Limpet there. Limpet almost too low to be useful and damaging the lance. We know the driving skill of John Denny Jr. We know the power of Limpet. We know K2 is on the back foot. We know that they can avoid that egg beating weapon. They're ramming them into the corner there, Limpet. Here comes the lineup. Oh, almost had them into the pit. The important thing to remember is K2 has come back from losing points on more than one occasion this competition. And that weapon, just one good hit, can cause a oh, major oh, issue. Oh! Massive slam there into our pit release tire. And once again, oh, K2 joisting it. has been righted. That works so much in its favor now because it'll hopefully be able to turn over Limpet, which could change the direction of this fight entirely. K2 getting underneath Limpet now. Uh, is it just me or is Limpet looking a little slow here? A little sluggish? Oh, oh Limpet flipped up and over oh. and dancing around the edge of that pet. What an upset it would be. Driving skill of epic proportions from both teams here. K2 turning off the beta now, similar to what they did to Snappy. Yep, once again making sure that Limpet don't accidentally get knocked back the right way up. The key you have to remember is now Limpet's wedge is basically useless. So all it's going to be doing is lifting One itself onto the front three. of K2 and making this an easy fight for K2. Limpet will want to use the back of its robot like it's doing there to push into K2 and force it a drive thing because Limpet will have a far more powerful drive train than K2. I tell you what, for a grand final fight, this has been absolutely wild desperate all together as the two machines are just sort of hanging on with each other now. We are perched on the edge of our seats watching this ladies and gentlemen. This could be anyone's fight at any second. K2 spinning up its weapon again trying to earn damage points. A limp it very much worn down now. Not as impressive as it was whenever this fight first began. Limp it definitely flagging. The two of these war weary machines and what a great ten story seconds. it's been for both of them as the last 10 seconds of our grand Six, final counts down it's going four, to the judges three, this could two, be one of the toughest one, decisions the judges have ever had to make in this entire competition it's gone to the time limit we have to leave it to the judges i don't know who won that i don't know about you stephen honestly alistair toss a coin i wouldn't want to be the judges in this position i wouldn't want to call it beautiful fight from both teams there. so the judges have made their decision. They have been judging on control, damage, and aggression. And before I announce this, uh, Head Judge Kane wanted me to tell that this is the closest decision that they have had to make over the whole competition. The decision was, however, unanimous. And the inaugural Bugglebutts champion is... Can we have a round of applause for the inaugural Bugglebutts champion, K2! It's been an amazing tournament from start to finish. We've proven that good things really do come in small packages. Thank you for watching BuggleBots! Hey!